Hey there, do-it-yourself technicians. Backups are important, and they're doubly important when you're making changes to your system. There are two types of people in this world. Those that have lost data and wish they had a good backup, and those that haven't lost data yet and will wish they had a good backup. The pain is real. It's always an interesting discussion. Some people, usually those that have lost important files, go way over the top with their backup, at least in my mind, spending hours each week making sure all of their files are backed up and safe. I've lost data, and I've also had to explain to many, many people that they have lost all of their data, unless, of course, they're willing to spend a lot of money on serious clean room data recovery. That said, if you do need that sort of thing, in Australia, I recommend PAM data recovery. Tell them the tech doctor sent you. But the effort of backing up has to be proportionate to the value of the data. If you're backing up your company data, then yep, it's mission critical. And serious time and money needs to be spent on that sort of thing. For most people, a simple cloud solution is probably all they need. I back up all of my important files into my Dropbox account. There's other data, like the recordings that I use to make these videos. Some of them are backed up, but not online. Video files are just way too big. It's too costly and they take far too long to upload. I'd be sad to lose them, but the reality is I rarely, if ever, look back on them. I mean, the finished product's on YouTube and that's usually all I need. I also rarely back up my working PC. I'm not gonna lie, there are times where I regret this, but in the end, a fresh install of Windows is often not a bad thing. And the amount of software that I use these days has reduced a lot. If I've got Windows and Chrome, I'm nearly halfway there. Sometimes a backup is a really, really good idea. And when you're playing with operating systems and updates, that's a really good time to make a backup. This week, I wanted to do some fiddling to make sure Secure Boot could be enabled on the PC that I use to edit these videos. This is not normally a machine I play around with. I've only got limited time to make videos. And when I wanna make a video, I wanna be able to sit down, edit it and get it done but it had the right combination of settings and it needed to be the one I tested on. I'd also recently run across Macrium Reflect, a new piece of backup software that I hadn't heard of before. So I decided to combine the two, give it a test and back up the machine before I fiddled. Up front, I like it. Macrium make a range of different software for backing up individual workstations as well as servers and backing up multiple machines across the site. They also have a technician license and a deployment kit, which I may well look into in the future. The thing that drew me in though, was the free license. It's available using one version behind the current version. Macrium Reflect Free is version seven, whereas their main product is at version eight. And it's available for both personal and limited corporate use. Basically, if you are doing a backup of one machine to restore back to that machine, it's all good. The free version is not for deployment or technician use without the appropriate license. The process is simple. You request a license and it's sent in an email with a download link. You then download and install the software and enter your license key details as provided in the email. Once installed, it immediately checked for minor updates, downloaded and installed that as well. You select the drive you want to back up and any extra options and let it go. There are plenty of options, but the defaults work pretty well. It took seven and a half minutes to back up this old Dell laptop, which has basically nothing on it other than Windows 11 beta. The backup file when it finished was an impressive 10 gig, which is pretty good compression considering there's about 30 gig of data used on the drive. The Rescue Media Builder takes the existing Windows recovery file, adds a few extra options like Wi-Fi support, and then pushes it to your external drive or Windows recovery partition or you can burn it to a CD or create an ISO. It would have been nice to have enable multi-boot so the drive could be bootable on both UEFI and BIOS machines, but that would have required repetitioning and possibly redoing the backup. The process takes about 15 to 20 minutes, at least on this slow old laptop, but it turned the drive into a bootable drive without affecting the current backup that was already on it, which was handy. Personally, I do think it would have been handy if they stepped you through the process of partitioning the disk and creating the rescue media before you did the backup. But maybe it was in the docs. To be honest, I didn't read much. I decided to simulate a failed disk 
by taking the working SSD out and replacing it with another SSD I had on hand. Booting to the rescue disk was simple. I pressed F12 at startup and selected the USB storage option to boot from this Dell computer. It booted into the Windows recovery environment and gave me the option to restore. The SSD I'd put in already had a version of Windows on it, so I removed all of those partitions and restored. The process was fairly quick, ultimately taking about 10 or so minutes. But during the process, it only gives percentages of completeness, not an estimated finish time, which was a little bit disappointing. But admittedly, these things are probably really difficult to calculate. The recovery environment also has good networking capability. So if you store your backup files on a network drive or NAS, you can restore them directly from there. All in all, a great backup system. The free works great, but if you want more features, the latest version, or just to support the company, the home version is a one-off US $70 for a single license or $140 for a four pack. Business licenses are US $75 per workstation and start at $300 each per server, which is really pretty good value and no ongoing license unless you want dedicated support. Question of the day, do you have a backup system? What do you use? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys and fix it when it breaks or when you break it. If you're on YouTube, there's some older episodes that you may not have seen before here and here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking down here or to our mailing list by clicking up here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next episode.